last week we painted Portobello. And this week we're going to do his base, his seven or eight piece base I lost track. The thing is a pain in the butt trying to put together and magnetize this. Um, because of the odd nature of this, I couldn't put it on a painting stand. So you're going to be looking at my hands a lot. So you're going to have to deal with that. Uh, starting off with, I primered it black and then I went over it with some uh, German, was it German? I think it was olive green. Uh, just olive green primer uh, just to get some randomness to it and then starting off with the white areas uh, beginning with a heavy dry brush of Vallejo Game Color Earth next comes another heavy dry brush this time earth mixed with a little bit of Vallejo model color pale sand and the base is a destroyed titan of some sort, and this is one of the things I really don't enjoy painting. Um, I like wrecking stuff, but when it's pre-wrecked, I find it very annoying to paint because all the cracks and especially all the like little dirt piles have already been added in. And I don't mind dirt when it's on a base, but when you start modeling dirt into like nooks and crannies and on other surfaces, it's always is way out of scale. They look like, you know, more like rocks. So, a lot of little annoying things on this base. Uh, we're starting off with the heavy dry brushes, just to get the main colors filled in. And we're doing it roughly because there's gonna be a lot of weathering and uh, other effects to use on this. So, heavy dry brushing is the way to start out. Another dry brush layer, this time getting a little bit softer, not scrubbing so hard, and this time mixing in uh, more pale sand to the mix. So the previous mixture was earth with a little bit of pale sand. This is pale sand with a little bit of earth. And uh, trying to work more on the larger areas, uh, figure all the nooks and crannies, that's where more of the dirt is gonna collect. So we're trying to make the larger panels uh, a bit brighter. The last thing to do at this step is to do some fine detailing with pale sand and a little bit of white. And I'm just going to going around and highlighting the uh, edging where all the armor is cracked. Uh, there's two different ways you can do this. Either you can highlight it like a normal highlight or actually you can uh, darken it and do weathering like it's a uh, paint has chipped off around the bullet holes and the cracks and all that. Um, I'm starting off with the highlight because the weathering I can always add later if I don't like the look. Um, doing more damage would be more realistic, but sometimes, especially I do a lot of damage stuff, uh, sometimes I just want to go for a, a different effect. So you can highlight the cracks or you can weather them. Your choice. We're going to leave the white as it is and do all the weathering towards the end. So we're going to move on to the... Uh, metal trim areas. These are all heavily rusted. So for this, I am starting off with an undercoat of Vallejo Game Color Camo Black Brown mixed with equal amounts of Vallejo Panzer Aces Dark Rust. Next comes Panzer Aces Dark Rust. And I'm just stippling it on because I want an irregular pattern. Uh, rust rarely is a uniform thing, uh, especially on something that's just beginning to rust um, over several, several years. Yeah, it becomes a uniform, but uh, there's areas that are heavier rusted and lighter rusted in different colors. So uh, stippling it on gives a more of a irregular effect and really highlights, enhances the look of the rust. Next, we mix some Panzer Aces Light Rust into the Dark Rust and repeating the process. Uh, once again, trying to stipple it on. Uh, it's a little rough here in a few places, which is okay because we're going to be putting uh, a lot of weathering on it. So uh, the main key here is to keep that uh, random pattern look. We're not uh, highlighting it as we uh, would any other normal item uh, that is highlighting towards the top and shading towards the bottom. Uh, which I think would look a little weird for Rust, maybe a bit cartoony, not necessarily bad, but uh, definitely wouldn't call it realistic. 
And then finally, straight Panzer Aces Light Rust. Uh, again, applied haphazardly. Uh, not going too far into this color because I did want to keep all of this very dark uh, in order for uh, to have good contrast with the lighter white color of the armored areas. We're not done with the rust yet, but uh, we're going to move on to the next step and do a bit more weathering at the end of the video, just like with the white. There are a lot of metal bits on the model, and I decided right away I wanted to add a bit of variety in them rather than painting them all with the exact same metal painting techniques. So for the inside of the cockpit and also this engine cooling area, radiator, whatever, uh, starting off by painting it with some Vallejo Model Air gun gray mixed with black. And then, like with the previous rusted metal areas, highlighting by stippling on a little bit of straight gun gray. Uh, again, don't want to go too bright with this. Um, it is supposed to be weathered, so it's not going to be all nice and shiny. Uh, and again, we're going to be adding a lot more weathering to it a little later on. Next, we paint all the, what I assume are bits of concrete or rock that are uh, all over the base of the miniature. And for that, we're using Vale. Uh, it's a mix. It's Vallejo uh, model color beige mixed with a, a little bit of gray. I believe it was Vallejo model color light gray. Uh, so picking out all the little bits of debris and painting all those in, and then doing a light highlight by adding a little bit of pale sand to the mix. And then the final thing to paint is the dirt. As I mentioned before, this is what I really hate on miniatures when they try modeling dirt onto something because the scale is just way off. Uh, but for this, I did use uh, Vallejo Game Color Leather Brown for the dirt. Um, but again, it would have been so much more easy and so much more realistic if I could have just used washes and dry brushing uh, and even pigments to do the earth rather than having these uh, large grains uh, I have to deal with. Um, I know some people are going to say, well, maybe they're rocks, but there has to be some dirt somewhere on a miniature if it's on a planet somewhere. So I did have to paint some dirt. Uh, but with that, we are done. And now we can start with all the washes and the weathering. Finally, we get to the fun part, which is all the weathering, starting off with AK Interactive Dark Brown Wash. And this is going over everything except for uh, a majority of the white areas, uh, doing uh, it all over the rust, um, the both areas, the, this, the heavy rust, uh, the metal areas, and then all the dirt and the concrete areas, and just a little bit in the cracks of the white plates where necessary. For the other metal bits, I am using AK Interactive Rust Streaks. So it's still going to be rusty, but it's going to be a different look than the other metal trim areas that were full on rust. In order to give the rust an irregular look, before it was completely dry, I dabbed it with a cotton swab just to uh, pick up some of the excess rust and again to uh, make the rust more random, therefore hopefully more realistic. After letting all the washes dry for a couple hours, then I went back with AK Interactive Landing Gear Wash, which is essentially a black wash, and applied it over the heavy rusted areas and any areas that needed a bit more shade uh, in between the rocks, um, some of the more recessed areas on the lighter rusted areas uh, here and there and trying to define some of the cracks, uh, the deeper cracks in the white areas as well. Initially I was not planning on uh, doing a lot of weathering on the edge of the plates and all the cracks in the white armor areas because I figured there was enough wreckage as it was. However, I decided it did need a bit weathering 
on those areas. So went around with a uh, little piece ripped off of a Brillo pad and some tweezers um, and just dipped it in some Vallejo model color camo black brown, tap it on a towel a few times and just go around and uh, gently press it uh, here and there around the model, concentrating on the cracks, uh, the edges of the plating, areas that would, it would make sense that would be rusted or damaged or the paint would be chipped off. And um, when you're doing this technique, uh, you want to just touch briefly, but it, the longer you touch, the more paint comes off. So if you want larger uh, blotches, you can uh, just hold it down longer. And it, it's kind of like the, the stippling method. It's the same thing, except for you're using a torn up piece of Brillo pad. Uh, foam from miniature blister packs also works, but uh, I prefer this. It's a bit more random. The Brillo pad, or I guess scotch Bright pad might be more accurate because that's what it was, uh, gives a good random pattern for the rust. However, it doesn't, it's not perfect since it, sometimes it is too random and you have to go in on occasion uh, with a fine tipped brush and add a little bit rust uh, specifically exactly where you want it. So that's what I'm doing here again with the camel black brown and a very small brush, uh, just adding a bit more rust here and there, connecting the dots that were left from the scotch Bright pad. And that's about it. And then we go back uh, with a mix of the camel black brown mixed with a uh, a good healthy portion of the Panzer Aces light rust and just adding a little bit of color here and there to all those cracks we did mainly just the larger areas uh, not everything uh, again the whole theme to this has been uh, irregular patterns so just trying to keep that up so not too much at this point the model was sealed with testers dull coat and before moving on to adding the pigments now, I haven't had a whole lot of experience with pigments, uh, especially lately. Uh, there's just not a lot of call for them. Uh, they're so delicate, so you really can't use them on gaming miniatures, and a lot of the model kits I've been building lately are more sci-fi, don't call for a lot of dirt and earth effects. Uh, but they can be effective as long as you don't touch them a whole lot. We're gonna be using two different colors here. First off, I am using MIGS. If I grab the bottle and remember the name, industrial city dirt and doing this over a large portion of the model the idea that the uh, crumbling concrete has left you know a thin concrete dust over a majority of the model so just using a very short stippled brush uh, short bristled brush and stippling or brushing on the dirt uh, mainly concentrating on the concrete areas and the lower areas of the model not covering everything The second color is MIGS Dark Mud, and this I'm concentrating more on the uh, dirty areas, the areas between the uh, concrete blocks, or the concrete rubble, and the dirt areas on the top of the shoulder pad. Uh, hopefully I can work in that very crude, rough dirt areas, work them more into the model itself by spreading that dirt out. and. Um, just trying to, I'm adding a little bit into the recesses here and there on the white plates. Uh, doing it a lot less though than I did with the lighter color. I did also add a little bit of rust colored pigments to the heavy rust areas. However, uh, the effect, the pigment was a bit too dark in color. I really didn't like the effect, but just mentioning it to be honest. Uh, after applying the pigments, blowing off any excess, I went around with some moist cotton swabs, uh, just mainly to get the dust off the larger areas and to leave it in the recesses. Um, there's a lot of different pigments out there. The one thing about MIG, um, which is interesting, which is a good thing and a bad thing, I find that it sticks very well on its own. Um, with like Vallejo pigments, I find you can put those on on a brush and then just brush them away. The MIGs actually stay, they almost stain what you're putting them on. So while I'm trying to remove it, uh, it's not all gonna come off, which is totally fine. I just want it to lighten it up on some of the larger areas. 
Any excess pigment was then carefully blown off and then using the airbrush and some artist's odorless thinner, I gave it a very light coat to protect the pigments. It's not going to prevent them from rubbing off, however it is going to give them a little bit of protection. Um, final step is to go around with some crushed graphite and I'm adding it to just the heavily rusted areas, mainly on top. Uh, the idea that those areas, uh, kind of like Portorabo, Portobello, is standing on top of it. Maybe this you know, hundreds or thousands of soldiers have crawled over this thing too, so they've kept those areas a bit more free of rust. And uh, I am applying this with my finger. It would have been better applied with a makeup sponge. However, mine were so old they actually deteriorated when I tried using them. So just trying to do this very carefully with my big fat finger. Final thing to do is to marry the two together and we are done. Here is our completed Porterabo from Forge World. Close enough. Um, it's an, kind of an interesting contrast. Um, the bright, you know, clean metallics on the figure itself and the very uh, destroyed ruined, dirty, dusty base. Um, I kind of admit they don't go together all that great. However, I was trying to create uh, this exactly how, or as best as I could, how Forge World painted it. Um, two things. Uh, first of all, the pigments make things very, how can I phrase this, dusty. And I know that's what they're supposed to do, but they do put a kind of a dull film on things. Um, which means, you know, they're not, obviously they're not going to shine too much. Uh, they're great, but they are very uh, easy to overuse. And I, I did overuse them here, but I purposely did that because this is a destroyed machine completely covered in, you know, in a war zone, covered with dirt and rocks and all that. Um, however, I, I'm wondering, I think visually this would have looked better if... And I know it's kind of hard to say this after doing all this, but if I kept all the base elements cleaner, um, with more shine to some of them, try to do the metal not totally rusted, but just do it barely rusted, uh, I think it would have attached, visually attached the base better to the model itself. Um, however, that's how Forge World has decided to represent this miniature, and uh, this was a commission piece, and I was trying to copy what he wanted, you know, from that artwork or from that original studio miniature. Um, if anyone's doing this at home, I, I would suggest trying to do a little bit cleaner and that will tie them together a bit better. Uh, but anyway, we are done. We have the dirty part and the clean part all married together. So let's watch it go spinny a little bit longer and uh, I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.